Hello, everyone. My name is Eric Florip with CTRAN, and we're here live for an online open house to talk about the vine on Mill Plain, which is now under construction. I want to first of all say welcome to everyone who is joining us live on the CTRAN Facebook page, or perhaps you're watching the recording afterward. Either way, thank you for taking the time to be here and to be informed. So today's event is part of a series of outreach efforts we are making to keep people informed on the progress of the vine, which started construction in earnest earlier this year. As you may know, Mill Plain is the second branch of the Vine, which is C-Trans Bus Rapid Transit Service. The first segment on Fourth Plain began operating in 2017. So just a bit of background on Mill Plain. Construction started this year after a multi-year planning and design process. c has involved the community every step of the way because we want a service that reflects the needs of our community. When it opens on Mill Plain, the Vine will serve a 10-mile corridor between downtown Vancouver and a new transit center on East Mill Plain. It will also provide direct connections to other routes, including the existing Vine service on 4th Plain. So in a moment, we're going to bring in Randy Parker, who is CTRAN's project manager for Mill Plain. But before we do that, I want to invite anyone who's watching this live on Facebook to go ahead and put your questions in the comments of this post now. We'll have a Q&A portion a bit later, but you can submit questions anytime and we'll get to them after Randy's update. So for more on the Mill Plain project and what to expect during construction, let's bring in Randy Parker. He is CTRAN's BRT and Regional Planning Project Manager. Welcome, Randy. Hi, Eric. Thank you. So as I mentioned to anyone watching, feel free to drop in those questions now. But first, let's hear an update on the project from Randy. Go ahead and take it away. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, can you click on the first slide there? OK, next one. Next slide. Thank you. So like Eric said, this is our uh, second BRT line. And um, this one's coming to Mill Plain soon. We're in construction right now. This is really a culmination of a multi-year process to identify the project and secure the funding. Um, so this is quite the milestone for us. Um, like I said, it's been uh, long to get here, but it's exciting to be here. And now we move finally through construction. Um, next next slide. So like Eric said, uh, this project is a 10 mile long corridor um, from downtown Vancouver to 184th near Clark College in the East County. It is primarily um, along Mill Plain Boulevard itself. It will be operating in general purpose lanes there's a new transit center at the east end here out by um, Clark College campus. And then um, in the downtown, it will um, enter and exit downtown through um, Fort Vancouver Way and Evergreen Boulevard and, and use the um, existing Washington Broadway couplet through um, the existing Turtle Place station to get out of downtown. Next slide. So the project includes 37 new um, stations. Um, there will be some modifications to the existing Turtle Play station to accommodate two BRT lines in there simultaneously. And then, like I said, a new transit center at the Eastern Terminus near um, Clark College and the Columbia Tech Center campus. Next slide. Um, so in terms of the construction, um, we selected a contractor in September. We selected Tappany, who was actually the um, contractor on the fourth plane project. Um, this project will incorporate a phased approach for the construction. So we're planning on three phases, uh, approximately 12 stations in each phase. And we will be starting the civil work in the west and heading east. Um, but this project also includes um, a large fiber component to it. We will be replacing the fiber uh, throughout the corridor and that will start in the east and head to the west so that we're not uh, in each other's way, so to speak. <laughs> um, and then the planned completion date is November 2023. Okay, next slide. So yeah, like I said, the, the phasing, we will take a phasing approach. This is um, a graphic of the stations involved in, the, in phase one. There's 11 stations in total. I think right now we're actually doing work at seven of them. Um, you know, it depends on the utilities and what's involved at each station. So um, it's a little different for each station. They're not all the same. Some are more involved than others, but right now we're uh, 
working on seven and hopefully opening up a couple more. Next slide. So this is a rendering of the transit center at the east end. It will have eight bays total, uh, six bays for the regular 40 foot buses and then two bays up here in the uh, northeast corner for the articulated buses and then a driver's uh, driver relief building and um, ticket office uh, there as well. And next slide. So there's numerous ways to stay connected to the project. Um, we've tried to do um, outreach uh, with each phase before we get there. So we do door to door outreach and direct mailings and um, email and through all the different social media outlets. We do have a construction hotline uh, and an email, construction email, and uh, you can get to our um, webpage with some information on the construction as well. Next slide. So this is a picture, it's actually probably two or three weeks old now. This is at Evergreen and C uh, near the library. So, um, and now the, today this has been, they have uh, the, the pad in the street actually poured. So this was forming up for that, that work. Next slide. This slide should be, this is at uh, V Street in Evergreen. The School for the Blind is just north of this intersection. Um, this intersection will have, you know, two new stations one eastbound, one uh, westbound, and then a new hawk signal and uh, crossing uh, for pedestrians there as well. And I think this next slide is one more. Oh, that's it. So so that's it. Yeah, I'd be happy to entertain questions if you have any. Thank you, Randy, for that update. We appreciate it. Um, so we do have a few things submitted already in the comments. Uh, Alex, asks will there be a stop at garrison the answer is yes um, yeah. mill plated garrison is one of the station locations uh, along that map and then Sherilyn, on a similar note asks do they know where the all the stops will be i'm behind the safeway on mill plain in andreessen and so the answer again is, is yes you can view that full corridor with all um 37 station locations that corridor map i should say and uh, mill plain in andreessen is also one of those uh, station locations that's planned as part of this um, update. So a few others I want to get to that we received in advance uh, from viewers on the Facebook page. Charles says that will be nice when completed. We hope so. <laughs> yes. uh, when the vine opened on fourth plane, it was a success by by almost any measure, uh, in, including ridership and many other metrics that we track. And, and we're certainly hoping for uh, similar success on, on mill plane when this second line opens. Uh, Briette also says, looking forward to it. Hey, us too. Thanks, Briette. Uh, another question that came in earlier from Marcus asked, what is the plan to connect? So we, we mentioned previously, uh, first of all, that this line will connect to a new transit center on East Mill Plain over by the Columbia Tech Center campus of Clark College, but not go directly to Fisher's Landing Transit Center. So Marcus asks, what is the plan to connect Mill Plain BRT to Fisher's Landing routes, such as commuter routes or the Skimania transit system? Yeah, so right now the plan is to will um, implement a new route that will just circulate between the two transit centers. So it'll go between the new transit center at Mill Plain and the existing Fisher's Landing Transit Center. And then uh, we're looking at modifying the routing, uh, in, in particular the eastern terminus of three routes that exist right now, the 30 uh, Burton route and the 80 Vancouver Mall route and the 92 Camas Washougal. So those routes would terminate and feed the new uh, Trans Center at 184th. Okay. And back to construction a little bit, you mentioned that uh, construction is going to be phased, which mm -hmm. for folks on the corridor means that different locations will see construction activity at different times. Um, Randy, can you just talk a little bit in more detail about what, what that phasing is going to look like? Uh, and maybe for folks at an end, maybe you're near an individual station location, how long should they expect to see activity at any one site if, if they're near one of those yeah. proposed stations? Yeah, so the intent is to you know, keep it controlled, so to speak, and not, not uh, dive into a whole 10 mile long corridor and have cones up through the whole thing. Um, but that's hard to do given, you know, uncertainties such as weather and what you find underground. But the plan is to like have um, each station may take six to eight weeks, somewhere in there. Some may be shorter, some may be a, a bit longer. Like I said, it depends on what's 
in what's at that station in terms of utilities underground and on poles, that sort of thing. Um, right now for the whole corridor, you know, we're planning on 18 to 24 months. So you figure six months per roughly per phase, three phases would be 18 months and then a little cushion for, like I said, if things go wrong <laughs> or we hit obstacles, uh, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, the, the intent is to do it a little differently, like I said, from fourth plane, try to keep it concentrated. We've, we've gone to great lengths to put in um, uh, measures to like li put limits on the construction during like say the holiday season near retail outlets or or in downtown vancouver so, so that's one reason we're starting right now in downtown try to get out of downtown before winter hits and before uh the holidays so okay that, that's the strategy yeah yeah appreciate that and then um kind of related to that i know you mentioned it a little bit already but with regard to construction what are, what are the impacts should people expect with regard to traffic or, or maybe businesses along the corridor and, and how has CTRAN been working with uh, the corridor um, businesses and, and residents on that yeah so we so a couple things the, the the hope is to try to keep at least one traffic lane open all the time for them not and, and if we do have like total com, uh, closures to limit those but hopefully there'll just be one lane going all the time. We've also tried hard not to have both sides of the stage of like an intersection at the same time simultaneously under construction. Um, that may not be possible later again if we run into uh, coordination issues or weather, whatever, but we're trying to do that right now. We're also keeping all the pedestrian access open, you know, through up and down the sidewalk and to businesses. Um, and then we are working closely with all the partners in the corridor. For example, the city of Vancouver right now has Broadway. They have major work going on in Broadway right now. Um, we had Evergreen, we were working there, but, and we had it open for a while, but they actually shut down Evergreen and, and Broadway. And we're, we're planning on right now piggybacking. Um, when they're done, we're gonna move right in there so we can get our water work done in the, and get the road back open. So that, that's sort of the plan overall. Okay, and I want to ask one other question that, that we received um, previously related to construction before we shift gears a little bit, and that is related to fiber. So you mentioned that mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. is concurrent work happening on the fiber aspect of this project, and I just want to kind of back up a little bit and ask for for folks who don't know what is fiber and and yeah. what what is that uh, particular utility used for in the context of this project? Yeah, so it's it's uh, they use fibers being used nowadays instead of like electrical wire through copper um, and it's used mainly for communications right um, in our situation we use it for like the signals uh, traffic signals in the corridor and all the data and communications that's going to um, each transit stop at, at each station so all that information on the passenger information you know the pits the passenger information displays that's on the monitors that all comes through um, the fiber optics uh, there's also like WashDOT uses it we'll, we'll be on this line and the city will use it for like fire life and safety so the fire department and the police are on on the fiber optic as well in this corridor so it was really a, a joint effort you know we knew it turns out that this is some of the oldest fiber in the region is in this corridor. And so when we started looking at it, we thought, you know, this might be a good opportunity to to upgrade that that fiber while we're in there, so to speak. Excellent. Uh, Sherilyn looks like she's dropped another question in the chat, which is, um, will the schedule on mill plane look like fourth plane? or How often will it run, essentially, is the question. What's the frequency going to look like on the vine once it's on mill plane compared to yeah. the other routes um on mill plane we're going to start with 20 minutes 20 minute frequency but it could be you know we could go to 15 or 10 as soon as really as soon as the demand picks up it's kind of it's starting to rebuild since covid right now so but we figured we'd start with 20 and go from there okay um and then just shift gears a little bit and I know it's it's been mentioned before that uh, another BRT corridor is planned on Highway 99. Um, that's been identified as a as a future corridor for the Vine. Um, Randy, can you just talk a little bit about what the importance is of having uh, a network of 
bus rapid transit lines as opposed to one segment that that a lot of agencies are are, are moving toward kind of a network approach as c-train is yeah um it's really about it's really about connecting or providing you know uh, premium service for different markets and so what this allows or will allow is better connectivity to premium service for more people to more places essentially um, you'll still have, uh, you know, obviously f folks can transfer to and from the the local routes, but to have these three BRT routes in, in these three major corridors will provide, you know, quick, reliable service for more people to more places. Okay. Um, Michelle looks like she's weighed in, in in the chat. Thanks for, for joining, Michelle. Just noting that she uses the stops at Safeway. That would be Andreessen uh, along the corridor. That's, that's one. Um, Randy, on that subject, since we've gotten a couple of questions, maybe folks joined a little bit late. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, not every specific station location, but maybe how the station locations are chosen through um, the early planning process and, and you know, for this corridor and other corridors, maybe uh, of a BRT project and how we land at those, those sites? Yeah, and so we went, when we, early in the process, the first year was really the whole intent of that was to develop a locally preferred alternative. Um, out of that comes what's your mode, what's your alignment and rough and what's your termini and um, where are the stations. Um, in that process, you don't have to have them all pinned down to like within 10 feet of each other, but you kind of want to know what intersection they're going to be at. For the most part, these stations are amongst all at existing where there are existing stops. Um, but what we do is you go through and you look at the usage at those stops. What kind of ridership are you getting at those stops? Are there a lot of on and offs? And so, you know, and, and from a safety perspective, you want to try to eliminate mid block stops so that people aren't running across the four lane arterial <laughs> highway to get, you know, to or from a stop. So those were really the criteria that we used. This line is about, I think it's just under half mile spacing, which is pretty typical for for a BRT line. Okay. Um, well, it looks like that's about all the questions we've received so far. Um, Randy, what other, other uh, I guess actually one other point that's come up is, is some of the uh, additional improvements that are happening at a couple locations. I know you've mentioned um, pedestrian crossing at, at at least one or two locations. Um, we've had a couple of queue jumps added on the fourth plane corridor, for example. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about what extra features will be incorporated into the, the mill plane project as part of this yeah. line? So a couple things. There's uh, two queue jumps on this corridor, one at 136th uh, eastbound and one at Grand. Westbound. For, sorry to interrupt. For folks who don't know, a Q jump oh. essentially is a bus only signal that allows the yeah, bus to sorry. go through <laughs> an intersection before uh, the uh, other traffic. Let's see. So there's that. I mentioned the Hawk signal at um, V Street for pedestrians. There's also what we've done is we heard early on that um, there were some improvements with the shelters themselves. The shelters will for the most part, look and feel a lot like the stations on fourth plane, but we heard that folks were getting uh, wet. They were getting, they're in the weather. And so we modified them a little bit to, we put the seats more in the middle of this, of the shelter. So they're covered up more. And then we, we made the, what are called the windscreens, which are on the sides and the back, we made those larger. So the intent there is to keep folks, you know, out of the weather. Uh, I'm probably missing some other, we kept the bike lanes, you know, if a bike, a, we made a bike lane go behind it. So we did that. Um, there's actually in, on, in downtown Vancouver, there's along Washington for three blocks, right from like 10th to 7th. Um, there'll be what's called a bat lane, a business and transit access only lane. So the parking will remain there, but buses and business access can get in that lane, but it'll be, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's going to be colored, but it'll be, um, signage will be there. It'll be marked. So that will help the buses get in and out of uh, Turtle Place Transit Center downtown. Excellent. And that's, that really gets at what bus rapid transit is, right? It's a, it's a menu of ingredients that are combined to yeah, create exactly. a better, a better yeah. uh, transit experience for riders and, yep, and better service right. and better reliability ultimately, right? And, it, and it'll have a lot of the same features that fourth plane has, you know, it'll have the bigger articulated buses, it'll have transit signal priority, 
level boarding, um, off-board fare payment at the at the stations, those sorts of features. Those will be the same. Excellent. Well, it looks like that's about all the questions we have for now. Randy, thank you so much for, for joining us for this Q&A. Uh, we appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for setting this up. All right. And with that, we will bid farewell to Randy. Uh, thanks again for, for joining us. And, and thank you to you all for uh, joining us for this live online open house today. Uh, as a reminder, you can find more information about the project anytime at catchthevine.com. And I will put the URL there for you. That includes uh, everything you need to know about the project, including construction. Um, we're putting regular updates on uh, construction there so you know kind of what's happening and, and what's ahead. And as Randy mentioned, we've also set up a call or text hotline that you can reach uh, seven days per week that's monitored by CTRAN and, and members of the project team. Uh, and that number is 360-953-3330. Um, again, you're welcome to call or text that phone number anytime if you have questions about the project, something that maybe uh, wasn't addressed today or, or maybe something you think of later. Um, we're, we're always monitoring that. So thank you again for, for joining us. Um, with that, we'll end today's event and we will see you next time. Thanks.